So some engineers were standing around a honky vehicle in China and there was a line or a banner saying near it, Ford has rolled out its first prototype car equipped with a solid state battery. Normally I'd be very, very skeptical of that wording because we've all seen that before. And of course, a lot of batteries that are solid state, quote, they still have even four or 5% liquid electrolyte in the battery cell. And so therefore it's kind of, a, it's up to the interpretation uh, of the, uh, the brand, basically the manufacturer to define whether it is enough solid to be called solid. And I guess that's a stretchy thing, isn't it? You could sort of, you could play with that, I suppose. And they do. But uh, this one's a bit different. This is a full vehicle built on a production line with a solid state battery system, all the gubbins as well, all the electronics. And it's installed in a car, literally being dri driven around. And it's actually real, it's an actual solid state battery. So four is not a startup. Uh, four group in China. Uh, they're a very big company. They've got a few dollars. They build millions of cars every single year. When they put something together like this, it's because they want to see if it works as a system, not because they want headlines or anything like that. They're actually just doing their business. This is what they're doing. They're not trying to hype stuff on the internet like Toyota would be, for example. So this car is under the Honki brand. I hope I said that right which is their premium mark. Historically, that's been the brand for government vehicles or officials, high-end sedans and that sort of thing. So they're not doing this in a cheap uh, city car. They're testing it in something where stability or safety and long-term reliability really, really does matter. So maybe it can go for 10 or 20 years. Hello, folks. My name is Ben Alexander. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate your time. These are the channel supporters. Thank you very much if you've joined or you've bought me a coffee. Really appreciate that and I'm really thrilled, so thank you very much. Now, in terms of the battery itself, the numbers being uh, mentioned are about 400 watt hours per kilogram, just so you know, about 165 in a BYD Atto 3, for example, in the Gen 1 blade cells. So even if that ends up being optimistic, it's not 400. Let's say it's 300, something like that. That's still a big step up from where we are today. That's actually quite brilliant. Most LFP packs sit maybe 160, 170, something like that. And then you have some, we have better ones available now, which are 210, for example, which is really pushing that chemistry. And, uh, you know, pretty far, it's really gonna be quite hard to get more than that, I think. So even a conservative solid state battery pack is gonna be a big jump in energy density. And that doesn't just mean more range, it means less weight, which can in turn uh, make the car more efficient to move, which means you can have an even smaller battery pack. People always fixate on range, of course, and energy density, but weight is actually the quiet killer in EVs. It is a terrible thing. And uh, heavy batteries mean heavier suspension, heavier brakes, uh, more tire wear, you have to have bigger, everything's bigger basically. Worse economy, worse efficiency. If you can pull a couple of hundred kilos out of the floor of the car, you know, let's say 200 kilos, 300 kilos, that's like two or three very, you know, pretty big adults. And that's a lot of uh, energy to move that around. So they would have, you know, you'd save that. So the range figures being talked about are around the 1000 kilometer mark on China's test cycle. So perhaps in the real world, I would say on the WLTP cycle, if you're being super efficient, uh, usually it's available. It's, it's possible to get the WLTP cycle if you're really efficient. Uh, 750, something like that. That's still well beyond what most people actually need day to day. And that means you could just choose to put a smaller battery in the car and, and just give it 500, 600, something like that. Because I think at that point it's, it's plenty really. Charging is another part of this as well. Although four, hasn't gone into a lot of details yet. Solid state batteries are meant to handle, of course, much higher charge rates because you don't have the same thermal issues as liquid electrolytes. It's a completely different beast. No boiling, no off-gassing, uh, far lower risk. If you're a bit of a, a battery chemist as well, feel free to put stuff in the comments. I'm not actually a battery chemist. I just know a bit about them. So that safety side is probably the biggest reason for is interested in, 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 in all of this, basically. We know China has been really, really pushing and chasing and forcing militantly uh, safety in all things EVs and batteries, like the door handles the other week that was announced. Um, they've banned all fires. It can't be possible for a car to set on fire anymore in the future if you do everything to it, basically. A solid state battery is much harder to push into thermal runaway. No, there's no flammable liquid, for example, much higher tolerance to damage. That's a very big deal if you're thinking about long-term durability, crashes, fleet use, or government vehicles. Now, this isn't something that you're you're gonna buy next year. I don't think we're gonna see this in, in like Europe, for example. Four has been pretty clear that this is still a 
prototype car, that's what they said. They're talking about ongoing testing through uh, the first quarter of 2026, uh, demonstration fleets after that, and limited production somewhere around the end of the decade, so in a few years' time, which is still earlier than most Western brands are talking about, period. Toyota has been talking about solid state for, I don't know, forever, 16, 17 years, if I'm honest. I think there's a funny uh, screenshot of several of their tweets that they uh, have made over the years, and they're always saying next year, the end of this year, next year, year after next year, definitely coming. It never seems to be coming. Volkswagen as well, they keep hinting at uh, solid state battery chemistry. I mean, to be honest, they're lucky to get any battery, let alone solid state, so I don't think they can be saying very much. And uh, startups talk about it quite a lot actually constantly and uh, I think they're just obviously trying to build up a lot of hype I think that's the point so then maybe they can I don't know do a initial initial public offering or do a sort of um, you know so they can do a bit of a scheme to raise money or something like that but uh, yeah China seems to be taking a different approach and yeah, less talking just more testing and they have the cash and the wit and the business business wit basically uh, more importantly to do this so this isn't happening in isolation either catl has openly talked about a solid state de development with uh, even higher energy densities and they're the world's largest battery manufacturer by the way so they but in all pretty much everything they say is true from what i can see from the outside pretty much everything they say they deliver on sake is also doing something similar and that's chinese state-owned as well so this four prototype, it's not a one-off science project. It's obviously a part of a big, broad push. So what I find really interesting is how low-key this whole thing has been, which I think really adds to the authenticity, really. No big global reveal, no you know YouTube stage events or anything like that, no flashy launch or no events where there's free wine and Cheerios or something. Again, I wouldn't go to that one again. I've done that. No, you end up being sick. Just a quiet rollout, really, and uh, a photo of some engineers next to a car posted to their website, which is pretty, I like that. And that's that usually tells you when companies do that sort of thing, that it's real. And it clearly wasn't part of a big scheme to hype something or to, you know, get headlines, which is an important thing. And I think people shouldn't um, misinterpret that. When companies shout really, really loudly about future tech, it often means it's still way off, really. Uh, when they barely mention it, it usually means, you know, they're, they're still testing it. They don't want to overpromise. And that's where this sits, I think. So it doesn't mean that lithium ion is obsolete suddenly. It doesn't mean that solid state batteries will be cheap or really, really, really cheap, like $20 per kilowatt hour. Early packs will be expensive, I reckon. Y the yield for them will be fairly low, I should imagine. And volumes will be quite small because it is a difficult uh, pack to produce, I think. So, And uh, my understanding is that you can't con uh, change uh, the production lines in the same way. So if you have an LFP production line producing lots of batteries in a giant factory, you can very, very easily within days change it to be able to produce sodium ion cells. You can't do that with solid state, obviously, and you need much more floor space. So a bit of an issue. I think that's, a, you know, that's, I think maybe that's part of maybe BYD's plan, I guess, isn't it? That could be if they want to have more floor space. They've got the Turkey plant, they've got the Hungary plant. Uh, they've got a few plants basically all opening up by the end of, uh, well, at the end of last year, beginning of this year. So, yeah, that's the hard part. And, uh, you know, coming up with the chemistry, making it viable, and then putting it into a building and to produce it. And four has now started doing that. So for me, this is uh, not about Hongqi or whether you buy one or anything like that. It's about the timeline shifting quietly forward for solid state batteries and people don't seem to realise it. I think that's this is one of the biggest tells. It's, it's finally happening. So solid state batteries aren't just experiments in the lab anymore, clearly, and uh, at least not in China, for sure. They've been quite ahead for a while with this sort of stuff, but uh, they, you know they're being driven around, tested and broken in real cars. They're literally doing 120 kilometer per hour tests into concrete posts. That's one of my videos this week, by the way. And once that happens, everything speeds up. It's basically the same with so much other tech we've seen over the last 15 or 20 years. So I'm really curious, what do you think about this? Do you care more about huge range? Would you rather have a lighter, safer car with the same range that we already kind of have, you know, 450, 500 for most people? And do you think solid state is actually necessary or are current batteries already good enough? Blade one, blade two, gen, uh, you know, blade, blade batteries, LFP chemistry. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. We do appreciate your time.